All right, I've got a, a rare opportunity here to meet up with one of the uh, Experimental Aircraft Channel group members that I've been sharing over the past couple months. Um, so I'm here with David Hayes and his RV-14 in his single car garage building his dream of an airplane. So I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough and a tour of his aircraft. So David, first of all, to start off, um, the questions I'd like to, to ask always is maybe what aircraft did you consider before getting this kit and what made you land on the RV-14? Or has it always been just a dream of yours to have an RV? I really did not know a whole lot about the RVs until I moved up here to the uh, Peachtree City, uh, Sonoy area. I had looked at a, um, a Lancer, I mean, a, um, a F-8L Falco. I actually ordered plans for those many, many, many years ago. And when I was about 17 in Popular Mechanics, I saw an article on a Teeny 2. And uh, I just, when I saw that, I realized I could build one of those. But, uh, but I've looked at the, uh, I looked at the Falco 8L, F8L, and uh, really thought that would be a cool one. But when I came up here and had my first ride in an RV, I was sold. Yeah, this is a bit, this is a bit wider than a Teeny 2, isn't uh, it? It is a lot wider and a <laughs> lot longer and a lot more complex than a Teeny 2, yes. Vans offers the component kits and the full kit. Did you opt to get one piece at a time or get the whole kit all at once or how did you go about that? I started with the empennage like they suggested and built that and then ordered the wings and finished the wings and then I ordered the fuselage kit and uh, did that. So um, I've, I've kind of done them in the order that Vans suggested. It's not necessary, but um, it's a learning process from the beginning and the empennage is probably the easiest to build. So that teaches you some skills that when you get into the fuselage and the wings, um, you got a lot more skills at that point to, uh, to get around and kind of innovate in getting things done. So I've, I've, I've done the vans quote unquote direction. And out of uh, the three component kits, which has been the most enjoyable? Uh, the fuselage kit, because you actually get something that you can sit in and make airplane noises in. Right. And right. Uh, so it's, uh, it's not only been fun, but it's filled the whole shop up. So um, I'm, I'm just about ready to kick it out and send it to the airport and start working in the hangar. But I'm hoping that I can still do the uh, avionics and the engine install here. I've currently got the horizontal stabilizer on because I'm, I'm trying to get my minimum and, and maximum um, control inputs and get those, uh, get the torque rod set to the right length. Um, so, and we're fixing, after we do that, we're going to put the um, vertical stabilizer on the rudder and get the minimum and maximum uh, movement on the rudder cables to get those set. And then we'll disassemble that, put that back up in the attic upstairs. and. Uh, then hopefully by that time the um, engine will be here late August and the uh, avionics should be here sometime after that so we can start getting some antennas and um, some wiring done prior to the uh, uh, avionics coming in. How did you find the, the learning curve for the, the riveting of uh, the aircraft here? Um, I, actually, I had to begin with a, an A&P mechanic, a retired uh, jet engine mechanic helping me and he taught me. I've always been good with my hands and with tools but I've never done any metal work so he taught me a lot about riveting, a lot about aluminum, a lot about aircraft construction and uh, since he's left I've just, uh, just gone on my own and um, with his expertise in the, in the very beginning he was very 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 helpful. So. Um, just a, and that's the reason you start with the tail kit. It's the easiest, the simplest, uh, the least uh, complex system to put together. Um, and uh, it teaches you a lot and then you can advance through the process. And as it gets more complicated, you've got many, many, many more skills. Okay, and going to some of the, uh, the, the details or options, it looks like you chose uh, the tilt up or, or did you say that it's only available as a tilt up. The 14 is only available as a tilt up. I have uh, I've, we've, I've got an optional tail wheel on here um, just to kind of get it a little bit higher off the ground and uh, I, I put a um, uh, an optional uh, door latch system in that uh, was a modification. Um, we're putting an oil system in because uh, the group around here likes to do smoke flights. 
Um... If you're finding value in this video, hit the like button on this video and it's really important that you subscribe as it helps me get sponsors like Airworks, Kit Plane Parts, Acme Aero, Edge Performance Engines, and Viking Aircraft Engines. And be sure to check out the links in the description below for special offers from our affiliates. Let's jump back in. I'm using the ones Vans recommends, the IO390, and um, I'm using the Thunderbolt. Um, one of our DARs locally is a guy named Vic Syracuse, and uh, Vic highly recommended the Thunderbolt over the standard engine. He said, for the little bit of difference that you pay, the quality that you get in that engine is worth way more than the extra $3,000, $3,600 cost. So he highly recommended the Thunderbolt. So they're building one of those for me. Okay, and this one I see is a is a tail dragger. Yeah. Have you uh, already got signed off and got some good tailwheel time, or will that be done in this airplane? I have about 500 hours in an Aeron Kachif, so it's not um, uh, it's not high performance tail dragger time uh, by any means. Um, but it's qual I, quality tail dragger time. Yeah. yeah, it's quality. But and I learned how to do um, ground loops that I never want to do again in the Chief, so it never damaged anything, but. Uh, I spun around on the runway a couple of times. In fact, that's the aircraft I learned to fly in, uh, is the Chief. So uh, to me, I think flying a tail dragger as a very beginning pilot, I think it teaches you pretty good rudder, stick and rudder skills that uh, carried with me through my flying um, experience. Uh, last aircraft I owned was a Beechcraft Bonanza, our, our Baron. And um, um, I actually transitioned from the Chief to the Baron. That's that's a pretty big step up. Yeah. So uh, my instructor kind of laughed at me, but uh, but that was a beautiful, fun airplane to fly. And this one flies very stable, like the Baron did, but it's so nimble, so so quick, climbs so well, and uh, it's got almost Baron speeds. Very very close, within about five or six knots of, of, of Baron speeds. One thing I like to see here and share with people is to, to explain where and how you can build an airplane in pretty much anywhere. And you're in a one car garage, so just briefly tell me, how did you step through, like you built a section, obviously you've got your tail and your fuselage, but like when you built the tail or the wings or fuselage, how did you go about storing that and then still have room to build and that kind of stuff? Yeah, this is an assembly room is all it is. I can, or a building room, I can build each individual part, but I can't really uh, assemble anything complete in here. I don't have enough room. So what I've done with the empennage, I, I built the empennage and then I've got an attic above with a pretty wide stairwell out in my uh, carport. So um, as I built parts, I could take them and put them up in the attic and store them. I also had a trailer outside uh, the house. Um, so when I built the, the tail of the fuselage, it wouldn't go up in the attic. So I put that in the trailer and then that allowed me to build the wings in here. And then once the wings were built, I've got a space in a hangar at Falcon Field. So my wings have been at Falcon Field now for about two and a half years. And uh, so um, that's been, it's been a little bit of a challenge, but as long as you've got a place to store them, you're okay. And the organization in here, I, I really worked hard with that. Um, I just went to Harbor Freight and got some of these little shelving units and uh, being a, a retired pharmacist, I struggled to find a way to uh, store all those small parts. So I just used 60 gram prescription valves and they have worked uh, unbelievably well. They have child resistant caps on them. So I have to struggle to get those off. But, um, <laughs> uh, Keep, but, keeps your wife from stealing your aircraft parts in the middle it, of the night, huh? It keeps the, I have to be careful. She's <laughs> a wonderful lady, so I don't want to upset her. But yes, it keeps her from stealing <laughs> aircraft parts. <laughs> Awesome. Well, when do you project? Obviously, these are long-term projects, so our projections are usually a little bit off, but when do you project that you might have this uh, able to fly? Um, we're looking right now, hopefully, December of this year to January, maybe February the latest okay. of, uh, of 2021. Uh, so I think that we can hit the December, January time frame because the engine comes in the end of August and the avionics should be in 30 to 40 days after that if they don't come in sooner than that and um, at that point just once those are installed we'll disassemble the tail and haul out the airport put the wings on it and do all of our final checks and hopefully get it in the air so I'm, I'm hoping hoping December to January February at the latest so awesome 
Well, I appreciate you giving us a quick tour of your project and also continue to share on the, the new group on Facebook to uh, keep everybody else um, also engaged and inspired to build airplanes. Never give up, never give up. Remember to like and subscribe. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and we now have the podcast on Podbean, iTunes, and Google Play. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.